Okay, so welcome to the first webinar of the EU Horizon 2020 project Hydroflex. My name is Mario Simonsmeyer, and I'm working as a PhD student at the Institute of Power Systems and Power Economics in Aachen, Germany. In the next 20 minutes, I would like to guide you through the webinar Hydropower and Flexibility. First of all, I'd like to um, give you a short presentation of my institute here in Aachen and its field of research. After that, I will explain what Hydroplex is about and which role we have in this project. Since we recently published a report on defining three European energy scenarios within the scope of this project, I would like to go in detail about it afterwards. In the end, I will summarize the presentation. Okay, so um, I'm working at the Institute of Power Systems and Power Economics at the RWTH Aachen University. The Institute was founded in 1953. Now our head of Institute is Professor Albert Moser. Um, besides two chief engineers, we are approximately 30 PhD students and 100 students who are writing thesis or working as students assistants. Basically, we work a lot with computational, um, computational simulations of the power supply system. In three research groups, we are working on a variety of research topics. I am part of the research group Market and System Analysis. Our research topics include, for example, day ahead, intraday, balancing, and capacity markets, as well as operation of storages, local flexibility markets, or nodal pricing. Both research groups, network planning and network operation, and system stability and security of supply are more grid-focused. Examples for research topics are network development, operation of the transmission grid, as well as smart grid and the grid structure of the future. At least we are researching in the field of network security, supply reliability, regulation, resource adequacy, and performing dynamic simulations to evaluate voltage and frequency stability. The IPCC 1.5 degrees report published in the context of the World Climate Change Conference in Katowice shows that climate change is progressing and profound and accelerated international transformations are needed to limit global warming to 1.5 degree. To achieve this, an energy transition towards sustainable energy is necessary to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This transition leads to major challenges in the European power system. Renewable energy sources as wind and solar units have an intermittent feed-in. The increase of those renewable energy sources leads to higher fluctuations in the power system. This raises the question, at the same time, mothballing of fossil fuel power plants reduces flexibility in a power system. And this raises the questions of how the increasing demand for flexibility in the future will be met. Hydropower has been an important renewable energy source for decades. There are already high shares of hydraulic energy production in Europe, in particular in the Nordic and Alpine countries. By using their storage capability, hydropower could play an important role in energy transition. That is where the Hydroflex project kicks in. Actually, the main objective of Hydroflex is to increase the value of hydropower through increased flexibility. And to achieve this, we are aiming at scientific and technological breakthroughs to enable hydropower operate with very high flexibility in order to utilize the full power and storage capability. Hydroflex is an Horizon 2020 research and innovation action, and we are 16 partners from five countries. Um, Hydroflex is coordinated by the NTNU in Frontheim, Norway. 
On the right side, there is an overview about the work package organization of Hydroflex. It's divided in seven work packages. IAEW's main tasks belong to work package two, in which we are lead beneficiary. In cooperation with our VP partners, we define scenarios and re reference cases on to do calculations and simulations of the future European power system to figure out um, the future operational requirements of hydropower to increase their value through increased flexibility. Um, our first deliverable, deliverable was to define three European energy scenarios, which we published in a report. I will explain more in more detail later. Um, for better understanding of our scenarios and the methodology, how we defined them, um, I'd like to begin with an explanation of flexibility in the power system. The easiest way of providing flexibility is um, the adjustment of generation or demand. The regulation of power plants enables the adjustment of generation. This type of flexibility is limited by the technical restriction of the power plant. The adjustment of demand is known as demand side management, which is not widely used today, but can be used more intensively in the future. Both adjustment of demand and generation is possible by regulating hydraulic power plants. Another type of flexibility is spatial coupling by power grid expansion. By increasing the size of the connected power system, spatial balancing effects can be achieved. Upon that, flexibility provision over longer distances is possible. The last type of flexibility is time coupling through storing energy in, for example, batteries or storage hydropower plants um, to shift consumption. All those possibilities are relevant in order to evaluate flexibility provision in the future European power system. And hydropower could play an important role in that. To evaluate the future operational requirements of hydropower, we are performing simulations of the future European power system. For this purpose, we use our tool chain, which consists of three steps. At first, the European wholesale market simulation of a whole year gives us the, gives us the dispatch of power plants, net positions, costs, and prices. Based on the market dispatch, we simulate the grid operation. The results of that steps are power flow on lines and redispatch in case of grid congestion. In the last step, we perform dynamic simulation of selected critical situations to evaluate the stability of the power system and the contribution of hydropower plants. Since the future power system is subject to uncertainty, we simulate different scenarios of the European power system, which means that the scenarios we defined have to meet the input data requirements of our tool chain. Tool chain. Before we defined any scenario, we did a meta-analysis of existing scenarios. At that point, I'd like to present an excerpt based on the scenario of the NSOE, the European Network um, of Transmission System Operators for Electricity. Those scenarios are used in the 10-year Network Development Plan, EYNDP. They provide three different scenarios, like the Sustainable Transition Scenario, the Distributed Generation Scenario, and the Global Climate Action Scenario. The sustainable transition scenario is characterized by a gradual decline of installed capacity of fossil power plants in line with gradual incline of renewable energy sources, as well as grid and uh, transmission capacities. 
The distributed generation scenario assumes a comparatively increased amount of renewables, especially small solar systems combined with a high regional flexibility supply. At least high global cooperation concerning climate protection leading to the highest amount of renewables in line with the highest decrease of thermal power plants characterizes the global climate action scenario. To evaluate the scenarios with regard to the future opportunities of hydraulic system, we developed seven different criteria, which you can see on the right side. For each scenario and criterion, we chose between low, moderate, or high. And in the end, we expect low opportunities in the distributed generation scenario, moderate in the sustainable transition scenario, and the highest in the global climate action scenario. So our key task was to cover a wide range of uncertainty with regard to the demand for flexibility provision by hydropower plants. On the right side, you can see the three um, European energy scenarios we develop. Green hydro, reference, and prosumer scenario from a high demand for flexibility provision by hydropower plants to a low demand. Each scenario embodies a path of different developments in five year steps from 2020 to 2040. As uncertainties in the near future are not significantly high, the reference scenario is the only one in 2020 and 2025. On this slide, I'd like to compare the different scenarios by using the developed criteria I showed before. The reference scenario represents the best guess scenario. Um, this scenario assumes today's expected development will be continued. In the reference scenario, we consolidated the most probable scenarios we evaluated in the meta-analysis. In the figure below, you can see that each of the criteria is moderately pronounced. On that basis, we developed the green hydro scenario, which represents an advantageous scenario with respect to flexibility demand from hydropower. Therefore, we reinforced advantageous developments and mitigated um, the disadvantageous ones. For example, we increased the share of renewables in comparison to the reference scenario and decreased the number of other flexibility options. In contrast to that, we created the prosumer scenario, which represents a disadvantageous scenario with respect to flexibility and demand from higher power. There, we mitigated the advantageous developments and strengthened the disadvantageous ones. This brings me to the end of my presentation, and I'd like to summarize the most important points. To cut greenhouse gas emissions, a change from fossil fuel to renewable power generation is taking place. Therefore, the European power system is facing challenges like an increased demand for flexibility in the future. The Horizon 2020 project, Hydroflex, tries to increase the value of hydropower for increased flexibility. And as a first step in this project, we defined three European energy scenarios as a framework for future investigations in the project, considering uncertainty. Um, in the further course of the project, Simulations of the European power system will follow to evaluate the demand for highly flexible hydraulic power plants and determine the operational requirement for hydraulic power plants. Afterwards, those results will, will be used as an input in other work packages. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me.